You probably purchased your IBM personal computer to solve a specific problem or to assist you with tasks that you had heard personal computers are able to do. This chapter will identify the subjects addressed by commercial pre-written software and show you how to begin to use two of the most common packages. And you'll learn the meaning of more words in this new computer ease language you're beginning to understand. There are six general categories currently addressed by commercially available pre-written application software. Word processing, database management, financial forecasting and budgeting, accounting, telecommunications and electronic mail, and graphics generation. Word processing packages allow you to write letters and reports, correct what you have written before you print it, instantly move words and paragraphs around, merge mailing lists into letters, check spelling errors, even search and replace specific words or phrases. Database management programs allow you to create your own customized electronic file cabinet. You can then access those files in a large variety of ways, largely determined by your own particular needs. The most common example of a database management program is an electronic mailing list file. In that file, you could have the names, addresses, even telephone numbers of everyone you need to correspond with. For example, if you run a small business, you could tell your computer to sort through the mailing list of your customers by zip code. The program would arrange the order of addresses, then print the labels in that order so you have the most efficient stack of envelopes to send to the post office. Or you might want to write to only those customers whose last names begin with the letter B. Your database manager could give you a list of those customers almost instantly. Essentially, a database management program files data and information in such a way as to allow access from many different directions. A word processor application program, on the other hand, stores data sequentially, usually allowing access in only one direction. But suppose you wanted to merge a mailing list and a form letter. You could get another software package that would allow that merger to take place. You've heard the names of many of the best-selling application software packages. You probably have one or more of them yourself. EasyWriter 2 and WordStar are popular word processor packages available for your computer. Visifile and Visidex are two database systems that are extremely flexible and adaptable to your own needs. VisiCalc and SuperCalc are two of the best-selling financial forecasting and budgeting packages. They allow financial projections and manipulations on numbers to be performed quickly and easily. Peachtree Software and BPI have accounting packages designed for businesses. Most systems for accounting provide general ledger, accounts payable and accounts receivable and payroll functions. Telecommunications and electronic mail offer another exciting way to use your IBM personal computer. With the addition of a modem, which stands for modulator demodulator, you can literally use the telephone line coming into your business or home to call up another computer. That other computer can be another personal computer or a giant mainframe that offers a broad range of services to personal computer users. You may have heard of services such as CompuServe, The Source, and Dow Jones. They offer access to more than a thousand databases where information is stored and available to you on your computer. You can get breaking world, national, state, and local news and sports from UPI, stock market quotes from Dow Jones, shop at home from a computerized catalog of products, send mail by computer to other parts of the country, check airline schedules, read movie, wine, and restaurant reviews, even sell and buy almost anything on computerized bulletin boards. Many local newspapers around the country are available on your computer when you use it as a remote terminal tied to another computer. You can even send electronic mail to other personal computer owners and receive mail from them. Visitrend and Visiplot are examples of graphics generating systems. With graphics packages, you can create graphs, charts, architectural drawings, in fact, almost anything visual that you could imagine on your display screen. Then, with the addition of a printer or a plotter, you can produce what's on your screen on paper or overhead projection cells in color or black and white. There are even some packages that combine various categories in one integrated program. Context MBA and 123 are packages that include financial forecasting, graphics, database, word processing, and telecommunications in one package. 
And then there are educational, personal, and entertainment software packages. People of any age can expand their horizons, create new opportunities for themselves, and access an unlimited wealth of information. Perhaps one of the most popular packages in all of personal computing today is VisiCalc. It has been called the tail that wags the dog because so many personal computers have been sold so that people can use VisiCalc. VisiCalc is produced by a company called VisiCorp, which offers a wide range of software packages. VisiCalc is an electronic spreadsheet. It allows users to input letters and numbers at intersections of columns and rows. VisiCalc's fantastic power lies in its ability to allow formulas to also be placed anywhere on the sheet. When you first open the package for VisiCalc, you notice that there is a ring binder, two disks in their own packages, a folding reference card, and a warranty booklet. That is a very typical packaging system for software for your computer. The two disks are one main program disk and one for backup in case anything happens to the first one. The user's manual is very comprehensive. It shows you what every possible command does when you run VisiCalc. The VisiCalc program disk is not a start disk. The first thing you should do with VisiCalc is add the disk operating system to the master disk. VisiCalc does not come with DOS on the master. Do remember to have a disk already formatted if you want to save any work that you might generate with VisiCalc. One of the most common first time user errors occurs after someone has put a lot of time and effort to build a sizable amount of data. They get ready to file that data on a disk only to discover they haven't formatted one for that particular program. They must lose their work to format a disk. Here's a tip. When you get a new box of disks, go ahead and format all of them. Then you'll always have formatted disks ready. The first things you're going to have to do when you start to use a commercially prepared application program is to load that program into RAM. There are two ways to load applications programs. You can put the DOS information on your application's disk and load both programs from that one disk. Or you can load DOS from a separate DOS disk and then load your application's disk. The first way to load an application program is to start the program directly using either auto start or a control alt delete command. This method assumes that the disk operating system is contained on the application program's main disk. Since most applications program manufacturers don't provide the IBM disk operating system on their program disk, you must install DOS on their disk first before you can use it as a start disk. In addition, some applications programs require that you add configuration data to your program disk master. This lets the program know what specific kinds of peripheral devices you may be using. These applications programs usually give you a set of simple procedures to follow in the front of their manuals. They'll take you step by step through the procedures to install DOS and the peripheral configuration data onto their program master disks. Check the first few pages of the manual of one of your commercial applications programs for these procedures. When you've installed DOS and configured your applications program faster and easier to use these programs this way. To load them into memory, you'll only have to insert the master disk, then turn the power to your computer on or give a system reset command. Sometimes your dealer or someone else will have installed DOS and configured your disk for you. If this is the case, you're ready to begin to use these powerful applications programs right away. If your dealer hasn't already configured your disk, you may want to thumb through the procedures at this time. Go ahead and find the installation procedures in the front few pages of one of your application's manuals now. When you familiarize yourself with where they are, come back to this video program. The other way to load an application program is a two-step procedure. First, you would start DOS from your DOS disk. After that, you would remove the DOS master and insert the application's program disk into your drive. Then you would give your computer a command to load that application's program. That command may be buried deep inside your application's program manual. Each application program has its own unique set of command menus. Once you understand the basics of your IBM personal computer, you'll be able to adapt to new programs easily. Here's a helpful reminder for you. Whatever the application's program you're using, don't forget to back up your disks. 
it's a good idea to save your progress on disk every 10 or 15 minutes. Remember, the work you're currently doing is held in volatile memory. That means that any power failure, no matter how brief, could erase any work that you haven't saved. Some users make it a habit of frequently revising a backup disk as well. All it takes is a tiny bit of dust to cause problems with the disk. If you have a backup, you could save yourself hours, maybe even days of work. There is also the copy protection feature. Some programs can be copied using the standard disk copy program available on your DOS master disk. Other programs may be so proprietary that the packager may want to prevent unauthorized copies. If a program isn't copyable, be extremely careful with both your master and backup disks. You might not be able to get replacements very quickly. Be sure you fill in whatever licensing agreements or warranty cards that come with an application's package. Sending in these cards will help packagers identify you if you do need to get Some programs will have their own copy programs built in so that you can stay in that program if you need to make a copy. Some will even have a format program included so you don't have to run the DOS master disk to format a volume. And many software manufacturers even have hotline telephone numbers for users' questions or problems. You should now be able to use your computer for almost any kind of common application you may have purchased it for. However, you may want to learn about programming to develop your own software, customized to your own application. If that's the case, the last chapter of this tape will give you a very brief introduction to programming. One of the common myths about computers is that you need a very extensive background in mathematics to program a computer. That isn't so. The following chapter will show you that clear, logical thinking is the only prerequisite for successful computer programming.